Sweden was neutral during the First World War, but that doesn't mean that Sweden didn't affect and wasn't affected by events of the war. And that is what I'm going to talk about today. I'm Indy Nidell. Welcome to a Great War special episode about Sweden during World War I, shot here in Stockholm, Sweden. Okay, let's look at some history. In 1814, during the Napoleonic Wars, the Treaty of Kiel was signed by Denmark, Sweden, and Great Britain. Now, Denmark had been an ally of Napoleon, and Sweden had been an ally of Great Britain, and the treaty gave the Danish territory of Norway to Sweden. Now, after this, Sweden would enjoy a hundred years of peace, pretty unusual for the times. In 1905, Norway became independent from Sweden. Now, before the war, a lot of people believed that Swedish sympathies lay with Germany. There was traditional animosity between Sweden and Russia going back centuries. King Gustav V of Sweden was married to Kaiser Wilhelm's granddaughter. The Swedish marshal was very much pro-German. And in 1910, the Swedish and German army general staffs had met to discuss an offensive against Russia. Although, as we know, nothing came of that. But still, as war loomed during the July crisis, both the king and Swedish foreign minister Knut Wallenberg assured Germany that Sweden would never join any war on the side of Russia. And there were talks about the possibility of Germany using bases on the east coast of Sweden and on the island of Gotland. But still, as the war broke out, Sweden declared neutrality in the general European war August 4, 1914. Sweden and Norway made a joint declaration that guaranteed each other's neutrality four days later, and in December, a further declaration was made by the kings of Sweden, Norway, and Denmark, at which time, Swedish army units that had been sent to the Finnish border stood down. But its trade dependence on the belligerent nations and its geographic position made Sweden important to both Britain and Germany, and there were army officials on all sides who included Sweden in their war plans. In fact, in a recently published anthology on Scandinavia during the war, we read, the Scandinavian countries escaped war with a much narrower margin than was generally realized in the immediate aftermath of 1918. Allied sympathizers called for neutrality, but the many interventionists in Sweden were pro-German, and though they were relatively few in number, they were big in political influence. And even many of the Social Democrats were outspokenly pro-German because of its well-developed social security system and its scientific and industrial achievements. There were several German attempts to induce Sweden to join the war, promising Finland or the Baltic states in return, but they came to nothing. However, Sweden did one thing for Germany. It allowed Germany to communicate through Swedish telegraph wires to its overseas embassies. These communications couldn't be so easily intercepted by the British, though Sweden claimed they discontinued the practice late in 1915. There was also the issue with mining Oresund, which connected the Baltic to the North Sea. Now, Germany tried again and again to convince Sweden to mine the Oresund. Denmark had actually already mined the Danish Straits, and on July 28, 1916, Sweden mined Kulgrunsrenan, which pretty much closed it to all non-Swedish traffic. The Allies subsequently described Sweden as neutral with reservations. Unlike the USA, which sold or lent armaments to the Allies, Sweden traded with both sides, which brought hostility from both sides. German submarines sank over 200,000 tons of Swedish shipping over the course of the war, and Britain had restricted trade with Sweden as early as August 1914. But for the first two years of the war, Sweden did pretty well from trade. Germany especially needed food and iron ore, and Sweden made a killing in those markets. But once the United States entered the war, rules of neutrality that favored neutral commerce changed. For the Allies, Sweden could be regarded as an enemy for supplying Germany, and blockaded. And Germany, for its part, couldn't tolerate shipments to Allied lands. Now, things came to a head in 1917. Food supplies had grown scarcer in Sweden, mostly by the Allied blockade. So there was a fair amount of unrest, and this was complicated by the Russian Revolution, which sparked a real fear that it would spread to Sweden. Hunger riots began to put huge pressure on the right-wing government, and in September 1917, the Luxburg scandal broke. Now, remember when I said that Sweden claimed it no longer routed German telegraphs through its telegraph wires? Yeah, well, that turned out to not be so true. And they had routed one message from the German minister in Argentina, Graf von Luxburg, through to Berlin that called for certain Argentinian merchant ships to be sunk without a trace. This message was intercepted and published by the Allies, which caused a great deal of criticism and embarrassment for the Swedish government. 
Add to this Prime Minister Karl Schwarz's son being involved in a black market scandal, and you had a resounding liberal victory in the new Swedish elections. And in May 1918, an agreement was reached with Britain and the United States that allowed Sweden to once again begin importing produce from the West and feed the Swedish people, many of whom were nearing starvation. Overall, though, Sweden made it through the war relatively well. Shipping losses were quite large, but did not significantly influence the economy, and its neutral stance helped Sweden to increase its exports and decrease its imports, thus creating a very favorable international trade balance. There was even a building boom. A lot of buildings in my neighborhood in Stockholm were built in 1916, 1917, or 1918. And who else in Europe had money to spend on new housing at that time? Right, this is very brief and very general, and as always, I encourage you to look up the stuff to get a more detailed look at what was going on. I'm not going to talk more today about the subject other than to close with the societal and cultural effects of the war on Sweden. See, when the liberal government of Nils Edén came into office, huge changes soon came for the country. The rise of the Social Democrats and the fear of revolution soon turned Sweden into a full parliamentary system with huge social changes eight-hour workdays, the abolition of the death penalty, universal suffrage that were just the beginnings of what would one day be the Swedish model. If you'd like to see our special about how the war affected another country at the other end of the globe, click here for our special about South Africa. And let us know in the comments what other countries you'd like us to do specials about. We will try to cover each and every one of them. Don't forget to subscribe. See you next time.